Hello and welcome back. So in this video we're going to spend five minutes looking at Grafana. So now we've got our database set up and we're logging some data to it. Um, I've now turned these two services back off. So I've just stopped um, Capacitor um, and this Chronograph service because I don't need them and I'm not going to use them. For me it's just the influx DB so that I'm writing to the database and then I'm going to use Grafana. Now Grafana uses um, port 3001 so you can go direct to it in the browser or you can do how we loaded the other one by just clicking the open button here. So we'll do just that now. Okay, so once in Grafana then, we need to start to link the database. That's the first step. So we go down to configuration and data sources. We then add a data source and it'll be an influx database. So we select. So we give this a name. We can leave all of this pretty much on its defaults because this is the same port that the uh, database is already being written to um, localhost 80886 and then if we scroll down to the bottom we can see the database details here so put in the database uh, name and then if you've if you've created a secure database you'll need to put the username and password in click save and test and it should come back and say that it's connected to it so if we click into the one that I created earlier you can see here my database called influx1 so once you've configured your database, you can then create your dashboard. So if you go onto the plus icon here and create, then click dashboard. You can add a new panel. And here you can see that the default is the influx database. So you can either leave it on default or you can actually click the database name. So here where it says select measurement, this is the key that's been logged into the database and will retrieve the data from it. So for me, I'm going to pick inside temperature and I'm going to change the select value to last. And you can see straight away that it's graphed that. You'll notice that this is in Kelvin here rather than Celsius. So even if I go and change the units in Grafana to Celsius, it's just a display title. It's not going to actually do the conversion. So to make that correct, I'm going to have to minus the amount. So if I want to make that conversion, I use the plus and I change this to math. And in here I edit this field and I get it to minus the Kelvin amount, which is 27315. That will convert to Celsius. And there we go. So then on the right hand side you've got a number of options of how you want this to look. So you can change the title, you can add a description, you can change actually what we're, how we're displaying this data. I can click it across to a gauge for example. So there's stats which is gives you a graph and a number, um, bar charts, tables, text and a number of other options. So if we leave that on um, gauge and then again we can choose what's being calculated whether it's the mean or the last value the last non-null value and then the fields tab we can choose units as I say this is just a display it's not going to actually change anything for you. So If we scroll down and find temperature we can select minimum and maximum value so we could make this a minus for example and this a maximum and as you see as we change that maximum it's changing the size of the gauge and where the 19 currently sits if we want decimals and then we've got thresholds so we can say well actually that's too warm for us and anything above 18 goes red and we can add a number of these and again if we just change them if I put that onto 15 for example that'll go to the middle and you can get it to draw that color on there that's just very useful if you want to see some sort of threshold um, when you're monitoring something and then we can apply that they're not great in terms of going back um, so if I go back on that 
it's not really going to change because it's set to the last value. Where you get um, the benefit of that is if you go back and you create another panel, you can actually copy these as well, which is also quite useful. So if we um, copy this, so we duplicate it, and then we go into edit it, and this time we just click to a graph. So now when we change this view here, you'll see that this is changing. However, this is still showing the last value we received. You can then save these as dashboards um, and you can get this to automatically cycle through different um, panels that you've got so you can create a playlist. Uh, and to do that, you go into the playlist button here. So if I nip into that and then you can create a playlist and you can create an interval of how long it stays on that particular one. So if I add all of the ones that I've currently created to this playlist and say I want to change that um, scrolling interval every five minutes, it will spend five minutes on each page and then move on. And then if we action that and if you start in either kiosk, th these modes will just basically remove some of the other options you've got on the screen. So if you hit kiosk mode, you basically don't see very much. It's just the web page and it'll start to draw your graphs and your gauges and things and then in five minutes time it'll scroll on. If you use some of the other options um, up in the top it will show you options to skip forward or go back like this cycle view and stop. The other thing to say is that this bit is quite important here this one minute so you'll see this on all of them this is an auto refresh so if you don't refresh that it's when you hit refresh on the keyboard or you can get it to auto refresh the thing again with that is thinking about um, the usage on the Pi is not to refresh it so quickly that the pie can't keep redrawing it so probably a minute or 30 seconds is probably about the maximum it's going to do otherwise if you get a lot of these it's going to start getting a little bit slow 